Hey guys, John Grimsmo here. Welcome to Knife Making Tuesday, week 45. If you haven't been following our series lately, in two weeks I have a CNC knife making class at uh, Tormac World Headquarters. And so I need to prepare and uh, get ready for that class. Uh, that's what I've got the next two weeks to do. So in that class we're making a fixed blade knife called a Tor. And I've got the next few weeks to prototype that and um, figure it all out. So in the next few weeks, I have to make sure that that design and the code and the fixture and everything is perfect so that I can bring it to the, to the class and uh, everything goes smoothly. So let's just jump right in. Last week, I um, made a steel fixture to be able to hold everything. So here it is. Um, it turns out I did one of the things wrong. Well, after sh shooting last week's video. See these pockets here, the rectangular pockets? Um, they were about 21 thousandths deeper than they should have been because I think I put a new end mill in the collet and I forgot to re-zero it. So it, these pockets were deeper than they should have been and that's unacceptable. So I ended up surfacing the entire um, fixture down and for some reason I left these areas untouched so that I wouldn't uh, interfere with the bolt. But uh, it turns out this is one of my handles. It turns out when I put the handle on the fixture, um, obviously it hits both the bolt and the uh, this raised section here, making that completely unacceptable. So, um, the reason that the bolts stick above the surface a little bit is because this is half inch plate. Um, the bolts are quarter inch, and I just didn't want to. I didn't want to countersink them so deep that I'm left with very little material. And the other thing is, um, I'm gonna, these holes are perfectly round right now. I'm gonna make them ovals. Just, uh, I find that they're too perfectly round and they kind of pull it out of alignment a little bit. So having them oval will let me um, push it up against the, the stops underneath. Anyway, I'm rambling. All right, so the first step I have to do is remove these two uh, cap head screws. So I've got these clamps on the outside. And these are, I don't know what the term for them is, but um, you know, they're adjustable strap clamps basically. And these stepped ridges here let you uh, raise this horizontal piece higher or lower to fit whatever size workpiece you're clamping. These things are incredibly handy. Um, I've been machining for about four years, you know, on the hobby level, and I've never used these until just recently. Usually comes in a set like this. Um, you see them all the time. If you're if you're into machining and buying stuff, you see these everywhere, and they're pretty affordable. But I mean, I've had this for four or five months now, and I've never touched it until just recently. Um, Eric's used it a few times because he's smart enough to try new things. But um, I absolutely love them. They provide an incredible cramp clamping force too, because they're half inch bolts. Anyway, um, so yeah, now I can remove these, um, but it's a two-handed operation. This little guy is one of the very first things I ever turned on my lathe, my uh, grizzly over there. When I first got it, in manual mode, I turned these steps into it and I was really proud of myself. You know, when you get it, you just gotta do something. So I turned this and then when I started anodizing a few years later, this is one of the first things I anodized and I tried a crazy ugly flame pattern that didn't work out so good. But I use this thing all the time. It's my uh, lever. You know, I'll put it on the end of that and crank it down or um, tightening all kinds of stuff on the lathe, I just keep this thing handy and I use it every day. It's those stupid little tools that uh, are the most fun. So here's a computer shot of um, Mach 3. This is the code I'm going to be running. Go to the bigger tool path here. Um, you can see the ovals for the bolt heads right here. Both the smaller one for the clearance hole and then the bigger one for the countersink. And the engraving up here, and then all the big blue diagonal lines, <clears throat> or um, horizontal lines, are the facing passes. Hi. So I realized I've got a lot to go over in this video, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dwell on this stuff. I'm just gonna fly through it and show a couple clips, and then uh, 
Tonight I'm going to be making blades and handles. So I got the handles mostly made and all coated up, so I'm pretty happy with how that's going to turn out. So the blades are hopefully going to go pretty smoothly. We'll see. We've got the two bolts installed now. Time to get these clamps off. Again, use my extension. One of the worst things is when you're doing something like this and you grab it like that and you pull and it breaks free, you're bound to hit your knuckles right on this corner or on something stupid. I've done it way too many times. So having a, an extension to get your hands out of the way or just to give you more leverage is it's one of those lessons you'll learn the hard way. Alrighty then, as you can see the fixture has been face down, it looks very very nice. The engraving, I redid that so it uh, looks awesome. So now the handles will actually fit, everything is flat, the bolts are countersunk, and uh, everything looks awesome. So here's a handle, uh, I don't think I filmed it before but I held it in a vise kind of like this and I drilled and milled the holes and uh, the countersinks and then I chamfered the um, chamfered areas. And I don't know if it shows up very well, but if you see that the chamfer is very oval, and especially this one down here, it's very oval because eventually the handle is going to be contoured like this, and it looks oval now because it's flat, but once it's contoured, it should have a very even chamfer around the outside. That's the goal anyway. All right, so next up I got my handle on here. Uh, the tool I'm going to use to um, contour it is a quarter inch two flute ball mill. For aluminum, typically you want to use two flutes instead of four. Like this one is a four flute coated end mill. And typically you don't want to use coatings for aluminum because they tend to stick to the coating. Uh, aluminum tends to stick to the coating. Um, unless you get like a ZRN coating or something that's meant for aluminum. But a bright finish two flute is usually the best for aluminum. Um, as a general rule. So I'm going to use that guy. Well, that didn't work at all. Um... Okay, next time, <laughs> a couple things happen there. <clears throat> um, feeding too fast, I was feeding at 20 inches per minute. Um, I didn't take into account that it would do like a full, full deep plunge here. Holy cow, that is a thick chip. That thing is really thick. <laughs> Um, okay, so it took a full deep plunge, feeding too fast. Um, basically, next time what I need to do is do a profile pass first to get away, get rid of all this extra material, so that the the um, contouring passes are just taking a little bit off the side, so that the side of the end mill gets some action instead of burying the end mill inside. Um, I gotta say, I don't think I've ever snapped a quarter inch end mill yet. That might be a first. Cool. Uh, the sucky thing is, that's the only two flute ball that I have. Now that I think about it, I do have some 3 16 diameter ball mills that I've had for like a year. I've got three of them that I've never touched, so I might change the code to utilize the 3 16 instead of the quarter. Because I really don't want to use a, co a coated end mill. It, it just sticks too much. Especially with a four flute that tends to pack the chips and they're really good. The funny thing is that I have a profiling pass uh, planned for after this. 
to clean up all the little edges and stuff. Um, what I need to do is do the profiling pass first. successful. Um, you can see the gouge is still pretty nasty there. That might actually be a problem. But I'm still going to run through it and test the code out uh, regardless of that. I don't care if it looks stupid. This is the first one. Alright, let's check this thing out. So obviously the screws got eaten. That's okay, they need to be deeper next time. Now I know. Although they look pretty sweet like that, uh, it's not a repeatable solution. Like, the second I unscrew them, they're not going to line up anymore. But, uh, yeah. That looks cool. It's thinner than I thought it would be. Like, this way. You can see here, little tiny ding from that mistake before. That's actually hardly noticeable. So, at the moment I'm not too concerned and it won't happen again. Dang. I took away so much uh, of the screw head that now my Allen key is just stripping. I was able to get this one out. But uh, this one's just stripping, so I think I'm going to have to take my Dremel and cut a slot into it so that I can just stick a screwdriver in there. Got it. It's smaller than I thought. I'm surprised at that, actually. I mean, I, I based it after a Norseman. But it is way smaller than a Norseman. I mean, you can see how it's got a similar pattern, especially with the humps down here. And the general curve of the back, but I forgot how much smaller I made it. So I'm an idiot. I just ranted for the past five minutes and didn't even push record. Um, okay, starting over. So as we found out, sometimes real world numbers are not the same as computer simulated numbers. Um, because these got chopped down. They're supposed to be like that. So I need to figure out the difference between uh, how thin this one became to how thick a normal one is. So I just simply measured across the faces like that. I got 419. Measure this one. I get 440. That's a 21 thousandths of an inch difference. So I'm going to round it up and make it 25 thousandths deeper um, so that hopefully it will clear. Because as it sits right now, they stick up quite a bit you know, enough that you totally feel it. And I don't want that. I want it sunken under. Even more than flush. Um, you know, I want it to to be nice, to be slick. So, I'll do the next one, probably 25, maybe 30 thou deeper, and then um, modify from there if I have to. So yeah, it's already uh, 2 a.m., depending on how late I want to stay up tonight. Uh, I think I'm going to make the right-hand side handle of this, and then um, probably hit the hay. But yesterday I was able to rough out some blades. Um, in the future and for the class, I'm going to get these water jet. So, but for these tests, I'm just using square rectangular pieces of, of steel. Um, so I had to cut out the clearance holes, the locating holes, and just some clearance issues. Um, which is not an issue anymore now that my, my fixture is totally flat. Uh, anyway. 
Uh, now the blades, at least the blanks, are ready to go onto the fixture. I still have to write a lot of code to figure um, out how to profile and cut and machine this whole thing. But. Alrighty, so as you can see here, I've got a vise and my small pallet uh, set up all in the same setup. Um, I'm done with these now, so I'm going to take that out of the vise and attach it to the fixture and uh, do that 3D milling again. So I did finally figure out why this first set of bolts got chewed up so bad. Um, because when I originally designed these in CAD, I didn't actually have them in my hands yet. I was just going by the pictures on the website and the specs that they gave. And for some reason, I thought the thickness of the head was uh, 50 thousandths of an inch, but in fact, it's 75 thousandths. 25 thou difference, almost exactly what I measured before. So uh, now that I know these are 75 thou head, I changed my dimensions and everything and made the pockets 25 thou deeper, and uh, it should work all right now. Alright dudes, here's a next day update. Both left and right handles done. Put together with some washers inside to make the thickness pretty much what it's going to be with the blade, but these things are awesome. Milling turned out pretty good. This gouge right here, that's where that tool broke. The mistake from before. Well, these handles are aluminum. I did it like that because aluminum is cheap and easy to get here. And uh, I know how to machine aluminum. Um, the handles for the class are going to be made from G10. Uh, I don't have any quarter inch G10, but I'll be buying it from Alpha Knife Supply. Um, Alpha has already shipped a bunch of material to Tormac, so it's there waiting for me, ready for the class. And he also shipped me some sheets of micarta because he says you gotta try machining micarta. It machines differently than G10 and it gives a really neat look to it. So I bought these sheets and uh, I gotta try them out. Um, now I still don't have any G10. He's sending another package to me with a bunch of G10 handles in it, but I have this right now. I think I'm gonna chop off a section of it so that I can make a pair of these handles from micarta, see what they look like. And the other thing is the the depth of the head this is what I thought would be perfect, and while it is totally flush with the surface this way, it's not flush this way. You can see how it sticks up, especially on this side, and you can feel the lip right there. So I would prefer to have them sink down even lower so that they don't sort of stick up like that. Uh, it's such a minor thing, but I'm going to make them 30 thou deeper on that side. And this is the, uh, the first way we did it, see how much they stick up there. That's way too much. So 30 thou deeper than this, and they should be nice and in there and feel super duper awesome. 
So I'm going to use that change on the micarta handles. All right, to crack this open, today I'm borrowing a uh, Benchmade 940 Warren Osborne knife. This is one of those, it feels kind of dumb to say it, but this is a grail knife for me. I've always admired this knife for the past probably 14 years. I've always wanted one. And even now that I make my own high-end custom knives, I still want one of these in my collection because they are just amazing. And I definitely want to build um, my own line of knives sort of in this style, in this size. Nice skinny handle. I mean, compared to my Norseman, which is quite a bit chunkier. This is not a, I mean, it's a long knife, but it's not a big knife per se. But compared to this, it's just huge, way fatter, way wider. Um, I'm really digging this skinny size. My buddy Brad Southern makes a lot of skinnier knives like this. So when I eventually get one of his knives, Brad, um, that'll be awesome. So anyway, I guess I can explain the difference between some materials here. These are two sheets of G10. They're eighth inch G10, so they're half as thick as I need them to be. But G10 is like a fiberglass laminate. Um, so it does have the dust and health hazards of fiberglass, so working with it. But it's like fiberglass and epoxy, just sort of all squished together. Very, very rigid, very strong stuff. That's why everybody likes them for knife handles and gun handles and stuff. Um, it's a great material and it's really cheap. Um, carbon fiber is sort of a very similar thing. It's a carbon weave um, in epoxy and it leaves this awesome weavy texture. Um, I gotta work with that more, but it's even more health hazardy than G10. Um, whereas micarta is the same concept, but it uses just layers of cloth uh, with epoxy, resin, or whatever. So it doesn't have the fiberglass or carbon health hazard, it's just like cloth. I've heard of people making micarta at home from jeans, like layer jeans, squeegee on some epoxy, more jeans, epoxy. Just layer it all up and it gives a really cool look. So when you sand it and fray it, it sort of looks like frayed jeans. I mean, you can kind of tell on the edge here, but um, uh, a lot of the custom Emerson knives seem to have micarta inlays or something. Same for the Chris Reeve. Um, so I'm looking forward to making them for the tour here just to see what they look like. I'll go with the brown just because it's a cooler color, or sorry, green. So uh, ideally you would use a bandsaw to cut this up. I do not have a bandsaw and I can't really think of a better way to cut it. I've got like an angle grinder, but that would be stupid. So I think I'm just going to clamp it to the table somehow and just use a quarter inch end mill to cut out some chunks exactly what size I need. I was able to lay it onto my steel fixture and quick and dirty use two clamping holes and two clamps um, just to put some side pressure on it. And I marked out just with a scribe sort of where I need to go. And I'm just going to manually machine this using CNC. Um, just jogging it around, go down to here, move down this way, move down that way. And uh, rough it out. And then I'll move the whole piece up and I'll do this chunk next. Since I'm doing this manually, I have to remember I can't go on the center of the line. I need to go on the outside of the line so that my, uh, my, my dimension there is still 1.5 inches. So I just need to jog the cutter until it's just to the outside and then cut the outside and same for this line. So in the spindle here, I've just got a beater uh, end mill I've been using for a while. It's a two flute quarter inch from Lakeshore. Uh, it's got some good chips in it, so I don't really care, but. So that's it, I'm just gonna use it manually using the uh, jog pendant here. Turn the spindle on, speed on manually. Hey guys, Eric here. Uh, John just had me run this code. Um, this is for the tour. 
and I've never seen it run. He's run one set of handles, and I wasn't here to watch it. Um, but he wanted to see how hard it was to just have me come out here and figure out how it was supposed to go on and all that kind of stuff. I did it. Not a problem. It went super smoothly. These are awesome, easy, and uh, yeah, class is going to be great. But these are my Carta. And they turned out pretty cool. They're a little, uh, well, not too rough, actually. Wipe some of this little fur off of it, and it seems pretty clean. Don't even know if we'd have to finish it too much. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. My Carta. Alright, so uh, we just made these micarta handles for the new tour that's coming out. Let's get them in the light. And just put them together with no blade. It's kind of funny, I told Eric to go out here and make them, not giving him any instruction on how to do it. And he did. How did that go? Yeah, just fine. Yeah? Yeah, not a problem. It was just trusting that it was going to be set up right and hitting go wasn't going to be my failure. But no, other than that, it, it was super easy. It took 23 minutes, and I don't think it needs to take that long. Yeah. Yeah. We can cut it down a bunch. Yeah, but at least five or six minutes, probably. Nice. The neat thing is, with the aluminum ones, you see the machining pattern hardcore. With the micarta, it's practically disappeared. You can see it yeah. on, the, on the edges here. It makes it... I mean, it's not even as grippy as normal G10. Yeah. You know? Like it's nice, it's not too grippy, but it's there. So holding it all together, it just, it works. I'm excited. Yeah, now just to see it on a blade. Yeah. I was um, looking at these ones here. Where'd you go? So if the handle goes about right there-ish, That's going to be way smaller than I thought. I know. So this is the front bevel of the blade. That's the tip. And all this extra gets cut off to match the handle pretty much. And this matches the handle. So the blade's going to drop down to right about there and then come across. Hmm. So it's not huge. No. I, it keeps getting smaller the more I make. Yeah. It's weird, but it's going to be awesome. I mean, it's 8 inch overall length. The Norseman is 8.75. So you can see that extra three quarters of an inch there. Hmm. But it just seems so much smaller. Yeah, it'll make a pretty cool little steak knife. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to do some uh, some quality testing. Yep. Steakage. That looks really cool, actually. It looks so pro. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm so used to looking at machined aluminum that, yeah. yes, these look amazing, but I'm kind of used to it. Yeah. But seeing that, it looks like, you know, like a production shop busted that out. Which yeah. which we are, but... Well, yeah. Hey guys, so another day, another project. What I'm doing today is to take it from my uh, sort of roughed out blank to I need to make it look like what the water jet shape is going to look like. Because I don't have any blades from the water jet yet. So that's pretty much what they're going to look like coming from the water jet. I just profiled it around, I cut the little pockets out of the inside, and I drilled the handle holes uh, undersized. So pretty much almost exactly looking like that from the water jet. Alright guys, well we're getting there. <clears throat> just wanted to show these micarta handles again in the daylight, or in the brighter light. These things are fantastic. Love it. They're way smaller than I thought they would be. That's weird. Um, here are my blade outlines. Again, this is the water jet profile, so it's going to be bigger. It's it's bigger than the than the final product is going to be. But just to give you an idea, it'll be about something like that. Just uh, you know, twenty five thousand smaller around the whole perimeter. 
So I did two handle or two blades with the pockets cut out and then one without the pockets. Um, I was just curious how weight distribution is going to be or how the weight balance is going to be for this thing. Um, whether I need the pockets or whether it's more balanced without them. So this will let me test that. Because um, it really sucks to have a fixed blade or any knife that's way handle heavy or way blade heavy. So I want to try to dial it in as, you know, as close as I can. Um, from the water jet, they're all going to have these pockets anyway, but at least this way I can know for future reference if it needs to be more handle heavy. So there we go. Um, now I've got to go write a bunch of code to face the blades down both sides, um, mill the grind, the bevel here, profile it, chamfer the outside, drill the jimping, and uh, that's and uh, precision bore the um, screw holes. Eric was nice enough to set these up for me. Just the handles resting on top, but that gives you a better perspective than what I had before. These things are sweet. So I've got some code now to uh, machine this side, the side we're looking at right now. Machines everything on this side and then I'll flip it over. I still have to write code for the other side, but just to get one side done before dinner would be nice. All right, here we're gonna go to face the part down. Notice how I have my um, tile and grip clamps here and pit bull clamps here. It sort of bites it in there really good and it leaves the uh, entire surface exposed so that I can use my, my face mill here to uh, zoop, face it down to the right size. I'm purposely not using any coolant just to see how it works. I see a lot of smoke coming up just from the oils and stuff burning off. A little bit of heat's okay on steel though. So that was the first pass and then I'm going to do another pass. Um, slower feed rate, faster RPM, just to see what it does. I'm trying to get a nicer surface finish than that. Although that's, that's okay, but... So that worked pretty well for phasing it down. Left me with a pretty decent surface finish. I think that'll sand out uh, very easily and quickly. And I think there's a few things I can do to make that even a uh, nicer finish in the future. And I think a, a better steel, like this is just 1018, uh, the blade steel might even give a better surface finish just because of the, co the properties of the steel. So I'm, I'm very happy with how that turned out. Um, it's good to know that my theory worked you know, the pit bull clamps and stuff, that, uh, that it actually worked out. And There's not a lot of cutting force uh, in the facing pass. Didn't sound like it anyway. Well, here we go, guys. Blade number one, pretty much finished. Had a few uh, enormous mistakes on this side, as you can see the big gash through there. Um, check out what it did to my clamp. Whoa, that was a scary one. Late last night, I wrote some new code and I tried a new setting and uh, didn't think to verify it. So that new setting caused a lot of problems. But I got a fix now, and, and the next one I make is going to be hopefully problem free. Well, there we have it, boys. Very first finished tour. Uh, obviously, it's nowhere near perfection, but. I cleaned it up, I disc sanded the face and scotch breaded it a little bit. See a little goof up on the disc sander. That was dumb. Um, little milling mistake there and there that I need to remove 
those are just lines in the code that are automatically generated and I need to manually remove them, which kind of sucks. Um, you can see this grind here was done with uh, an end mill that had dull inserts, whereas this one had sharp shiny inserts. So dull inserts definitely take a beating. But yeah, working out pretty good. Handles don't fit as well as they need to. You can see they overlap a little bit. That wasn't my intention. I got to get things to line up a little bit better. But little tweaks here and there, and uh, this thing's going to be crazy. Love the size of it. Love it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. That's Knife Making Tuesday. Catch you next week. Take care. Bye.